the Raspberry Pi 5, now in a compute module four-sized package. If you need the power of the Raspberry Pi 5, but in a more compact form factor, the Compute Module 5 is for you. Otherwise, grab yourself a Raspberry Pi 5. Pros 1. Largely compatible with CM4 products 2. More powerful than CM4 3. Same form factor as CM4 4. CM5 I.O. board offers everything that we need 5. Passive cooler works well 6. GPIO works just like a Pi 5 7. NVMe speed is great 8. EMMC speed comparable to PCIe Gen 2 Cons 1. Camera and touch display require extra work, for now, 2. Can't boot from microSD with CM5 EMMC boards 3. Metal case cooling fan doesn't work with passive cooler. Why you can trust Simi's hardware? Our expert reviewers spend hours testing and comparing products and services so you can choose the best for you. Has it been four years since the surprise release of the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4? Released in the heart of the pandemic, a time when shortages were rife, the Compute Module 4 brought a new form factor and features to the Raspberry Pi Compute Module range. Fast forward to 2024, and as the year nears the end, the rumors are true, there is a new Compute Module taking the flagship spot, the Compute Module 5. The Raspberry Pi CM5 is available in a variety of SKU, these go from $45 for the 2GB model with no Wi-Fi or onboard eMMC storage to the $95, 90-pounds, 8GB model with 64GB of eMMC and Wi-Fi. Our review unit is a $130 Raspberry Pi Compute Module. 5 Development Kit, which comes with Raspberry Pi. Compute Module 5, 4GB. RAM, 32GB. eMMC Wi-Fi. Raspberry Pi. CM5 I.O. board, Raspberry Pi, I.O. case for CM5, Raspberry Pi, cooler for CM5, Raspberry Pi, antenna kit, Raspberry Pi, 27 watt USB, Type-C PD PSU2X, Raspberry Pi, HDMI cables, Raspberry Pi, USB-A to USB-C cable. This kit packs all of the things that we need to start developing projects and products powered by the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5. The eagle-eyed will have spotted that Eben Upton, Raspberry Pi LTD CEO and co-founder, states that 16GB SRAM variants are expected to follow in 2025. We've no further information right now, but the prospect of a 16GB Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 is certainly enticing. Is the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 the right choice for your next project? Should you stick with the Compute Module 4? Let's find out. Design of the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 and Compute Module 4. Compatibility. The keen-eyed amongst you will have already spotted that the Compute Module 5 and 4 share the same form factor and connector. Previous models of Compute Module used a DDR2 SODIM form factor, but the Compute Module 4 introduced a new custom connector which improved the connections between the Compute Module and the breakout board. The Compute Module is essentially a Raspberry Pi with none of the ports physically broken out on the board. Instead, the port connections are routed through the connector for use with the I.O. board and your own product via a PCB. If you don't need Ethernet, then why have the connection? Likewise for any other port. You only break out what you need for the product, and this saw the compute module being used in televisions, cameras, home entertainment systems, and even electric vehicle charging stations. The Compute Module 5 comes in eMMC and non-eMMC SKUs, and there are models with or without Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth. You may be thinking, why? Industrial applications may not need or want wireless communications in a product, as it may interfere with machinery. Unlikely as electronics are typically emissions tested. They also may want to use removable storage, like micro SD cards to run the OS. As we later find out, the Compute Module 5 with eMMC is just like the Compute Module 4 with eMMC, you can't use micro SD cards. With the same form factor and connector, can we use the Compute Module 5 with accessories designed for the Compute Module 4? Yes, we can. I dug into my bits box and pulled out a WaveShare CM4-NANO-B board. This is an I.O. board shrunk down to the same size as the Compute Module 5 slash. We have USB-C power, mini HDMI, USB, Ethernet, connections for camera slash display, and a full Pi GPIO. 
It works. Another small compute module breakout board is the SourceKit Pi Tray Mini, which I am sad to say does not work with the CM5. The board was completely dead, no activity or current draw. I dug a little deeper into the strata that is my bits box and pulled out the Citron CM4 Maker board. This also worked with the Compute Module 5. Apart from only one USB port was working, the other three were non-functional. We're sure that Citron will release an update to address this. But the CM4 Maker Base did work with our 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD, meaning that it could become a rather useful development I.O. board. The Compute Module 5 seems to be largely compatible with older Compute Module 4 add-ons, but unless they are advertised as working with the CM5, we wouldn't rush out to buy any of these older add-ons just yet. Can we overclock the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5? Yes, we can overclock the Compute Module 5. Remember, this is essentially a Raspberry Pi 5 in a smaller form factor. To be exact, the Compute Module 5 uses the same D0 stepping as found in the Raspberry Pi 5 2 GB. Much of the dark silicon, unused parts of the BCM2712 has been removed. This cost-optimized version, according to Jeff Gearling, leads to a 33% reduction in die space. The D0 no longer has on-chip Ethernet Mac. The RP1 Southbridge handles that. It also means that the D0 consumes less power, but does it impact overclocking? Not really, but overclocking is usually a mix of luck and persistence. I managed to overclock the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 to 3 GHz, but I did need to give it a little more voltage, not for the faint-hearted. At 3 GHz CPU and 1 GHz GPU, the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 was stable, but it produced a lot of heat and the included for review $5 passive cooler worked better than the fan cooling. Why? Because with the fan cooling, there is no heat sink to pull the heat from the system on chip, SOC. Sure, it has an IHS, but that isn't enough to cool the SOC. Can we use the fan and heat sink at the same time? Number, the fan is two millimeters too thick. The best option would be to use a shorter heat sink than the supplied. Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5, thermal and power performance. I tested the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 in two cooling configurations, with the passive heatsink cooler attached and with active fan cooling. The two cannot be used together due to the fan touching the heatsink. I tried removing the fan screws to release two millimeters of clearance, but the fan housing still touched the heatsink. Passively cooled, the stock speed Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 idles at 38.9 degrees Celsius, consuming 2.65 watts of power. Putting the system under stress for five minutes, the temperature rises to 63.7 degrees Celsius and power usage jumps to 6.66 watts. The CPU temperature remains well below the 80 degrees Celsius throttle point. Overclocking the CPU to 3 gigahertz, the idle temperature sits at 50.5 degrees Celsius and still consumes 2.65 watts of power. Under stress, the CPU temp jumps to 85.1 degrees Celsius, and yes, it throttled. In an attempt to keep cool, the CPU will dial back the speed in an attempt to lower the CPU temp below the throttle point. Active cooling, with the fan around 10 millimeters away from the IHS of the SOC, the stock speed Compute Module 5 idles at 51.6 degrees Celsius and consumed 2.65 watts of power. Under a stress test, the SOC hit 82.3 degrees Celsius, again triggering the thermal throttle. Power consumption was 8 watts. Overclocking the CPU to 3 GHz, the CPU idled at 52.1 degrees Celsius while consuming 2.8 watts of power. The stress test saw the CPU temp jump to 87.3 degrees Celsius, the highest temperature in our tests, and consumes 10.99 watts. At stock speeds, the Compute Module 5 will run happily with passive cooling. But if you are designing a product around it, take into account that it does need cooling. I'm a little disappointed with the active fan cooling. The fan is quiet, triggering when the CPU goes above 60 degrees Celsius, but the distance from the IHS and the issue of heat sink compatibility means that the SOC will get far too hot too quickly. We really need a low profile heat sink and active cooling to get the best cooling performance. Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5, EMMC and NVMe SSD performance. To cut a long story short, the EMMC performance on the Compute Module 5 is akin to PCIe Gen 2 NVMe SSD speeds. 
This is much faster than even the best micro SD cards can muster, but still only half what PCIe Gen 3 provides. I tested eMMC and NVMe SSD boot times and bandwidth. Days after announcing the Raspberry Pi Pico 2W for $7, Raspberry Pi today announced the Compute Module 5 at the $45 price point. The Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 is the company's Raspberry Pi 5 modularized for industrial use cases, embedded applications, and adapted for other purposes. We've been waiting and expecting the Compute Module 5 for months, and now one year after the Raspberry Pi 5 single board computer launched, the Compute Module 5 has joined the family. This modular version of the Raspberry Pi 5 is priced at $45 US dollars. Eben Upton noted in today's announcement that some 70% to 80% of Raspberry Pi units are going into industrial and embedded applications. The Compute Module 5 still leverages a quad-core ARM Cortex-A76 CPU, video core 7 graphics, dual HDMI 4K outputs, 802.11a C Wi-Fi, dual USB 3.0, gigabit Ethernet, 30 GPIOs and other standard features, but now in the smaller and modular package. The Compute Module 5 is available in the 2GB, 4GB, and 8GB RAM options. A 16GB SRAM variant is expected in 2025. The Compute Module 5 is mechanically compatible with its predecessors. Like what you just watched? Subscribe to our YouTube channel for engaging articles, exclusive content, and the latest updates.